San Francisco is the most controversial city in the world. The news is full of stories of homelessness, crime, and progressive politics gone wrong. But I think that's a lie. So I'm visiting some of the coolest places in the city to see if I'm right, including a maze made of mirrors, a beach under the Golden Gate, the best and cheapest boat ride in the Bay, and much more. So stick around to find out if I'm right or if San Francisco really is dead. Starting with a park on top of a building. Salesforce Park is massive especially considering it's 70 feet in the air. You have to take a gondola, elevator, or an escalator to get to the top of it. It's covered in gardens and hundreds of different plant species. There's a walking path, a playground, an amphitheater, even a bar. And it all sits in the middle of San Francisco's largest buildings. Next, I'm going to Union Square, home to cable cars, high-end shopping, an empty retail space. In fact, you may have seen videos from this exact corner saying this is just one more sign of the end of San Francisco. And it's true, there are empty stores everywhere, but there's a better story a few blocks away. Behind me is an entire mall that has never been open. It has never seen a single customer. Just a block away is Westfield Mall, which is also shutting down. And here's a pro tip, car break-ins are common, so follow these signs. But enough of that, I need some coffee. Off to Sight Glass on 7th Street, one of my favorites in the city. This coffee cost me $7. Is it any good? Yeah, it's really good. Let's go see Elon at the Twitter building. City Hall, these people just got married. Behind me is one of the locations that the city used during COVID to help protect the homeless population. This paint is all that's left. They're called safe tent sites, and they ended up costing around $90,000 per site per year. That's less than it cost me and three other roommates to live right there. If this was gonna be a story about the end of San Francisco, we would go that way. Instead, to be clear, San Francisco absolutely has massive problems. I will run into some of those later. I'm not claiming those problems don't exist or defending the decisions that got us here. But the story of San Francisco as a dystopian wasteland has been done. I wanna visit some of my favorite places in the city to see if the character that got me to move there still exists, or if that's ruined too. And I wanna answer a simple question. Can San Francisco still be a fun place to visit? Let's find out. Let's go to Chinatown, home to some amazing places, including the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Factory, where they still make fortune cookies by hand the old fashioned way. They even sell jumbo sizes, cookies for all ages, and give out free samples to anyone who stops by. Right next to Chinatown is North Beach, San Francisco's Italian neighborhood. It's got a deli so good that Yankees legend Joe DiMaggio specified it in his will that they cater his funeral. No tourist trip to San Francisco is complete without a visit to Fisherman's Wharf and Pier 39. It's got a Bubba Gump shrimp, great people washing even on a Tuesday, and this legitimately cool mirror maze. I am lost. Whoa. Fisherman's Wharf also has sea lions, uh, there they are, a store for left-handed people, and incredible views of Alcatraz. I've been a couple times and it is pretty cool. If you go, just know that the night tour is really crowded and the day tour isn't quite as cool. There are actually fishermen here. Right down the street is the original San Francisco sourdough bread bakery. It's not the best though. We're going there tomorrow. Ghirardelli Square is right down the street. Aside from chocolate, it's known for these people that swim in the bay year round and incredible views of the Golden Gate Bridge. So Fisherman's Wharf is great and all, but it really is just for tourists and especially tourists with kids. So let's check out the Palace of Fine Arts, a great place for a concert or a picnic. Did I mention I don't have a car? Sometimes that's the bridge. The fog has a name. The fog is real. It's Carl. Summer in San Francisco means fog. About 1.30 in the afternoon. Usually this is the time when the fog would go away if the fog's gonna go away, but I'm gonna go to the beach anyway. Baker Beach, that's where we're going. There's one more thing you gotta know about Baker Beach before we head down there, and that is that it is clothing optional. Great place for a family picture. That's cold. Oh, San Francisco beaches in the summer are not for the faint of heart. It is freezing in the water. If you make it to Baker Beach, just remember, naked people that way, clothing required that way. Golden Gate Park and Spreckles Lake. There are turtles on a turtle. This is the bison paddock. Yep, that's right, there are bison in the park. There are gardens everywhere, including the Japanese tea garden. 
There's a science museum, a Ferris wheel, but we don't have time for any of that. We're going up there. Spooky. What is this? Wow. More flowers, not so spooky after all. You've already heard of the famous hate neighborhood, and it's definitely worth a visit. Punchbug Green, no punchback. One of my favorite places in the neighborhood is Free Gold Watch, an arcade known for its pinball machines. It's got a squid, glitter, a beer pong arcade game, a stress test, and of course, pinball. Streets are steep in San Francisco. Just about all of my batteries are dead, but there are still a bunch more amazing places that I wanna show you. So we'll come back tomorrow. Day two, sunburnt, a little bit tired, but I did find a new helmet. I'm at the Exploratorium and it's closed, but it does have this thing. Can you see me? I'm over here. When I started this, I really had no idea what I was gonna find. I've seen a lot of videos claiming San Francisco is a complete wasteland, and are they true? Yes, but not everywhere. Anyway, this is art and that's the bridge. I'm heading uphill to show you the windiest street in the city. Along the way, this is Oracle Park, where the Giants play. These are houseboats. And I'm getting coffee at the original Phil's. You might recognize this place from the show Silicon Valley. I just climbed up Potrero Hill to show you the windiest street in San Francisco. This is not the windiest street. This is. Down Vermont, then up Bernal Heights. Fortunately, there's a bus that gets me halfway there. This rock has an Instagram page. The next stop was supposed to be Twin Peaks, but fog is a factor today. Instead, let's go to... Dolores Park. Come here on a Saturday. Yesterday, I promised you the best sourdough in the city. I think Josie Baker makes the best bread in San Francisco, and this is my favorite thing from Josie. Behind me are the Painted Ladies, AKA the Full House Houses. They're just houses. Lunchtime, and today I want sushi. But not just any sushi, bullet train sushi. Is this a gimmick? Yes, but it's pretty good. Time for a beer. This is Anchor Brewing. Just yesterday, they announced that they'll be shutting down after 127 years of operations. And plenty of people came to stock up is this a sign of the end of San Francisco or something else? I don't know. Just one last stop on this tour, the San Francisco Ferry Building. It's full of restaurants, shops, and it just so happens to be where I'm getting my ride home. Is San Francisco worth visiting? If you've already made up your mind, I'm sure this video didn't change it. But my answer is yes. I had a great time visiting. The city has changed a lot. If you wanna see the sad sides of San Francisco, you won't have to look far. But if you wanna have a great time, that's not hard either. And if you really wanna know what it's like here, come check it out for yourself. Yeah.